Dear all, welcome back to today's lecture. Now, before I start, I must say that today's lecture is a little bit different. Now, till the last video, we have covered up to research proposal part 7. So, in the 7 parts of the research proposal series, if you remember, we have already covered majority portion of the different parts of the research proposal. The only two things that we are left with are the introduction and the methodology part. Now, the methodology part is sort of a big part. So, I am going to come back to that later. For now, I am going to show you the structure and content of a research report or for your term paper. Now, there are two specific reasons for doing this. Listen very carefully. I am showing you this whole structure right now so that slowly or gradually you can start working on your report. And regarding reason number two, I have already mentioned this in the first video of this course. There, I said that whatever assignments I give you in this course, whatever the assignment is, it will ultimately be added to your term paper. So the term paper will be taken from you into different parts. So just to elaborate, assignment one will be one of the parts of your term paper. Assignment two will be another part of your term paper. Now, why we are doing this? To ensure that we do not have to make a rush at the very end of the semester. So that is the only reason of doing that. So because of these two reasons, I want to explain the whole structure of the report and contents of the report in this video. And after explaining the whole structure and the whole content, I will give you a graded take home assignment. So without further delay, let's start. So in explaining this video, I have prepared two documents here. One of the documents is this one, which is titled Report Writing Structure, Outline and Instructions. And the other one is this one. So Report Writing Part by Part Examples. So both of these documents are already uploaded to your BUX account. So you can have a look at them whenever you want. So let's start. So a research report contains three main parts. One of them is prefatory parts or the introductory part. The second one is the main body of the report. And finally, we have supplementary parts. So that is basically the ending part of the report. We will cover all of these in today's class. So let's start from the very beginning. So the prefatory part starts with the title fly. So what is a title slide? Let me go to the other document and show you the example. Now, before I start, before I show you the title fly example, please read this one. The document explains some of the contents of the report through relevant illustrations and examples. Do not follow the formatting, i.e. font size, spacing of this document. Font size, spacing and other relevant instructions are given in another document named Report Writing Structure, Outline and Instructions. So this document is basically for example purpose. So whatever I explain in the other document, I am going to explain some of the parts of the structure in this document using relevant examples. But do not look at the formatting of the document or the font size of this document. Font size related instructions and other formatting related instructions are given somewhere else. We will get back to that. Let's look at the title fly example. So yes, this is an example of the title fly. Let me zoom out so that you can see better. So yes, this is an example of a title fly. So what is a title fly? It is basically a page used for beautification purpose. So just to show you, the title of this report is Global Estimates of Child Labor. All right. So this is a sample title. And in the title fly of this report, I have used an image of three children and some other illustrations. So this page is basically for beautification purposes to make the report look more professional. So that is as simple as that. Title fly is basically a page which may contain some sort of graphic or illustration that is relevant to the research topic. So that is all about title fly. 
Next, go back to the previous document. So after title fly, we have a title page. So what do we have in a title page? Let's go back to the document again. So yes, this is the title fly. And after that, we have a title page. So what do we have in the title page? Let's zoom in. So yes, this is the title page. So at the top, we will have to write the title of the report. And for our report, we are going to write all the titles in all caps. So all capital letter. Then you have to write submitted by, so your name, ID, and other stuffs. Then course name and course code. Then submitted to, so your course instructor's name and designation. And finally at the bottom, your department's name, Black University, and the date of submission. So you can use any of these two formats when writing the date of submission. So that is the basic of a title page. Let's move on to the next part. So we have declaration. This is something new to you. So what is a declaration page? Let's go back to the example again. So yes, let's go down. So here is a sample declaration. See, it's just these three lines. What do we have here? We declare that no portion of the work in this report has been submitted in support of an application for another degree or qualification or course of this or any other university or other institute of learning. So it's a very long sentence, I know, but the summary is you are giving a declaration stating that this report has not been submitted anywhere else for any other course. So it is not a report which you have submitted to maybe BUS 101 or BUS 301 or in some other degrees that you may have obtained in the past. So this is what a declaration is about. Your report must contain this. All right, so we are done with declaration. Let's move on to the next part. So we have a letter of transmittal. Now this letter, I'm sure you have covered it in your business communication course. So for that reason, I have not specifically written a letter of transmittal here. So the page is empty. So if you have forgotten what a letter of transmittal is, I would request you to go to the internet and check how to write a letter of transmittal and what a letter of transmittal is actually. Now let me move on to the next part. So after letter of transmittal, we have acknowledgement. So what is an acknowledgement? Again, let's go back. So what do we have in acknowledgement? Let's go down. Yes. So this is a sample acknowledgement. So what do we have in an acknowledgement? Let's read together. We would like to acknowledge Mr. X, Deputy Managing Director of some organization, for providing us with invaluable industry insights for the completion of this report. We extend our gratitude to the agents all across the city who helped us with their industry insight and helpful information that helped us put our report together. Finally, we express our heartfelt gratitude to those who have cooperated with us in conducting the surveys and helped us complete this report. So I guess by now you understand. In the acknowledgement page, we acknowledge those people who have helped us in completing our report. So who can you acknowledge? It may be somebody who provided data to you. It may be somebody whom you have interviewed. It may be the respondents of your research. So it may be anyone you want to thank who have directly or indirectly helped you in conducting your research report. So that is what an acknowledgement page might contain in your report. Now let's move on to the next example. All right, so after acknowledgement, we have abstract or executive summary. So I'm sure all of you know what an executive summary is or what an abstract is. In case of your report, your abstract cannot be more than 300 words. So that's a rule in your case. Now after executive summary or abstract, we will have a table of content. So again, we know that already what a table of content is. And after that, we will have list of tables. So what is a list of tables and how to create that? 
Let me give you an example in the other document. Let's go back. As you can see here, we have acknowledgement, then abstract page, then table of content. Now, yes, after table of content, we have list of tables. So what is a list of tables? So this is basically a list that shows what are the different tables that I have and in which pages. So if I have 10 tables in my whole report, there will be list of 10 tables and along with the table names, I will have the relevant page numbers that yes, table one is in this page, table two is in that page, table three is in that page and so on. So that is basically a list of tables. Now, how do we create it? Let me give you an example. Say if I go down, yes, I have a table here. So it's an empty table. Don't worry about the content right now. So I have a table here and it's in this page. Oh, Mr. Bin is here. Uh, Mr. Bin will come in handy very soon. Don't worry. <laughs> so yes, let's focus on the table right now. So in order to create a list of tables, what we can do is we have to select the table first. So I select the whole table. Now I go to the references tab. So I select the reference tab. Now on the right hand side, there is something called insert caption. So I select this option. Now see a dialog box appears and it says caption. And at the bottom here, I have a label option and a position option. Now take a look very carefully. If I click on the drop down icon of label, I will see three options equation, figure, and table. So Microsoft Word is asking whether I am creating a name for a table or a figure, which means a picture or an equation. So if your report has a mathematical equation, so you can name it as well. So in my case, it is a table now. So let's select table. Now this is the first table in my report. So it's table one given. Now I can write the name of that table. Let's start writing the name of that table. So colon, so the table's name is population of Bangladesh. So yes, this is the name of my first table. So table one, population of Bangladesh. Now I'm done here. Now if I select OK, see, the name of the table appears at the top. So the naming is done. So what I would do here, I would go to the home ribbon and select center. See, it comes at the center. This way it looks more professional. Now say my report contains this only one single table. So this is it. This is the one table that I have. Now if I go back at the top, so this is where I'm supposed to have my list of tables, right? Now, what I need to do is I need to go to the reference tab. Now at the right hand side here, I'll see an option called insert tables of figures. So if I select this one, a window pops up. So we don't have to do anything here. Just select OK. Now see table one population of Bangladesh and it is on page 12 so it is auto generated so we don't have to create it on our own so if we had 10 tables we would have a list of 10 tables and the relevant page numbers it is that easy so that is basically a list of tables now let's go back to the document again yes we have done list of tables now we have list of figures after list of tables so how do we do that Again, let me give you an example. So yes, in the next page, we have list of figures. Now, if I go further down, we will come to Mr. Bin here. Yes. So let's give a name to Mr. Bin. So this is an image of Mr. Bin. So we are going to give him a name. How to do that? Select his image first. Now, the process is almost similar to the process of naming tables. So again, after selecting the image, we have to go to the reference tab, then go to insert caption. 
Now here, the previous time we selected table. This time we'll select figure. So again, figure means image. So select figure. Yes, so figure one. So this is the first figure and the only figure that we have. So let's name it. Cute Mr. Bin. Sorry. Yes. We are done naming the figure or the image. So then select OK. Now see the name appears below the image. So that's fine. Now if we want again just like before, we can go to the Home tab and then select Center Align. Oh, already it's done. So Center Align is already selected, so we don't have to do anything here. So now the naming is done. So we can go to the top where we are supposed to create the list of figures. So we are here, then we select the cursor here. So yes, we have done it. So the cursor is here. Now go back to reference tab. Now select insert tables of figures. Done, select OK. See, figure one, cute Mr. Bin on page 12. So if you had 10 images, all the image list will be here along with the page numbers. It is that easy. So I guess it's clear to you by now. Now let's move on to the next part. Moving on to the document. Yes, we have list of figures. And finally, we have list of abbreviations. So what is this list? Again, let's go back. So coming down, we have list of abbreviations. So there will be cases where you have used acronyms or short forms of some words. So maybe you have used ODI, maybe you have used T20, maybe you have used IPL, these short forms in your report. So you have to create a list of abbreviations where you show the full form of each of these short forms. So ODI means one day international, T20 means 2020, IPL means Indian Premier League, so whatever short form or abbreviations we have used, we need to provide a detailed meaning here in this list. So that is what we call a list of abbreviations. So by now, we are done with all of the prefatory parts. So all the 10 parts are done and explained. So I guess it's clear to you now. So in the next video, we are going to cover what comes under the main body of the report. See you very soon.